feeling like we're gonna fight ya Anything to make the crowd hate ya And I bring the fire like a lighter I'm flexing on you suckers, this is fight club Don't ever try to play me, I'm not with the fun Rookie of the year, and I'm hella young They call me Zombie Ray the next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is the reaction to the rematch between Katie Teller and Delphine Persoon. We've been saying Delphine, but it's pronounced Delphine Persoon. The rematch, uh, Trill Dollar Bill, what were your thoughts on the rematch? And did the right person win? The right person won. Um, it was more clear this time. Um, I believe Katie uh, landed more clean, effective shots. Like she did in the first full time. This time it seemed like uh, Delphine was a little bit slow. And when her punches seemed to be everywhere else. Um, but she did come, kept coming forward like the Terminator. She kept coming forward, kept, kept coming no matter what Katie was doing. She kept coming forward. Just, uh, she just seemed a step off from the last fight. And um, I think, and that's why uh, Katie pulled away. I don't know if it was the age or the layoff or with everything going on, but oh, she knew that she wasn't supposed to be fighting her or, or whatever. She didn't get enough time. Whatever it was, she was just a little bit off from when she was the first fight. Um, but she's tough as nails. Delphine is tough as nails. These, these women are warriors. I just want to just tip my hat off to them. It was an amazing fight. Um, uh, Delphine was brutal. I know guys who quit Men who have quit and said they didn't deserve getting hit like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these women still moved on and gave us an exciting fight. It was it was exciting. I just salute to the women because they they gave us uh, one heck of a fight. All right, G. Yeah, so I had to go run and go get my little notebook. You know, because uh, I actually took notes because I remember how close the first fight was. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to take notes because I know it's not going to end in a knockout and I know it's going to be most likely a controversial victory regardless who wins. And so, yeah, I had it actually in uh, Taylor's favor. I had her winning six rounds and I gave Pursum four rounds. And so I had it where Taylor got the first four rounds. Then Pursum had the next four and then Taylor won the last two. And there was a lot of close rounds. There was like one, two, three, four. I had four close rounds, right? And every close round, I actually gave it to Taylor. Reason why is because, you know, um, there were like rounds where it's like, it could go either which way. But again, she's the one with all the belts. You want to beat the champ, beat the champ. You know what I mean? And so those real close ones, I put it to, to Taylor's side. But there was two rounds where it was just completely one-sided. That was round... Six and round eight. Those two rounds for Pursum, clearly those were her rounds. Like, she was putting in work. You know what I mean? Like, just, like, the way she fights, like, this is the problem, though, with Pursum. It, it helps her, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's like a negative at the same time. She kind of reminds me of a Sean Porter type of fighter, where it looks good for certain judges. However, for other judges, it looks like you're smothering your punches, you're yeah. not effective. You know, you're swinging a lot, but you're not connecting, especially when they show the replay in between rounds. You're seeing her miss a lot, you know? And so... That's exactly what that's exactly what she did, G. If you didn't get that wrong. She was smothering her shots, and she was throwing wildly. Exactly. You had that right, my brother. Go ahead. Yeah, and then also, I, think, I believe it was the second round where her cheek got busted. And I was, oh, man, she looking like Freddy Krueger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had to be... <laughs> I don't care. It's like... Come on, G, don't do this. But let's just be real. She started off looking like Freddie, ended up looking like Jigsaw. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> she, yo, her face got batted, bro. And then, <laughs> hey, man, I just got to be real. And Katie had a, you know, she had a titty on her forehead. You know what I mean? So <laughs> these ladies went to war, man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Hey. The views and opinion of G do not reflect <laughs> boxing, bro. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, listen. The, 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 those opinions are not shared by the other faces you see on the channel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, but I know everybody's feeling me on that. But anyways, yeah, man, I had it 96-94 for, for Katie Taylor. All right, uh, Ned. 
Man, I want to say shout out to Katie Taylor, man. The last fight with Pursuing, I, I didn't. I really didn't respect Katie's like game. I thought um, they gave it to her because she was she was the champ and she was the face. They were trying to push in boxing, but after last night's, um, after yesterday's fight, it made me respect her a lot more. I mean, she was slipping, she was rolling. Pursuing came in there really aggressive, trying to like trying to bully the fight, but Katie wasn't having that. And then literally by round three, uh, uh, Pursuing's face was bubbled up it was look she was looking and shout out to the goonie she was looking like my man slob but <laughs> the views and opinions of ned do not reflect the boxing bros i'm the only one that hasn't got a disclaimer <laughs> yeah. so like literally and wow, well i expect this from trill what is <laughs> oh, well, my best behavior <laughs> I actually only gave Pursuit two rounds because I felt those rounds, she was really aggressive. Katie really was getting out of the way to punch it. She was really landing anything. And when you got, when the rounds were over and then the, the cameras cut to Katie's corner and um, Pursuit's corner, it was, Katie's like, uh, is everything good? What's going on? Can you guys like, she was looking for advice while Delphine, um, Delphine Pursuit was in the corner. Like, <laughs> Just wheat huffing and puffing. Like, she's on her last leg, so shout out to Katie. Yo. I respect it. Yo. I'm becoming a fan, a true fan. Yo. Oh, but can I add to what Ned was saying? When you look at their corners, though, like, the rounds that ta- uh, that Katie lost, she knew she lost. And, like, she would ask her corner, like, yo, did I win that? They're like, yeah, don't worry about that. You still up, yo. Relax. You know what I mean? And so, mm. like, and I agree, Pursuing was breathing hard, but when you watch how she, she's literally, like, the, the female version of Sean Porter, like, that's a lot of work in that in that for for ten rounds. Like she seemed a, a little bigger too. She was way yeah, bigger than yeah, and yeah, she is. She was huge. She came in at five nine, man. Shoot, no mm-hmm. man, listen, man. She was trying to damage you, girl. So. The problem with Katie I actually had a little bit wider than you had a G. The problem with Katie is is her heart's just too big. Like she'll be boxing her. It looked like Madonna and Floyd. The first fight a little bit. How Madonna was just trying to overwhelm Floyd and he was just boxing away. But then the thing about Katie is once you tag her, oh, boxes out the window. The street fight, yeah. He boxes out the window. You know what I'm saying? And then, but also, too, one thing, respect to Pursuing, because I remember in the first fight, she didn't like the decision. But in this fight, she was honest and said, yo, she got that, yo, she beat me. You know I mean, so that big up to her for being honest. All right, complex. Um, I didn't get to watch the whole fight. I watched the highlights this morning. Um, it was a good fight from what I saw. Like, like Chul said, they were swinging. Like, they were there were some exchanges there that were highly, highly entertaining. That they were really going after it. And um, I first learned about Katie when I lived in Ireland, and she was an amateur at that time, and she was a big star. And I feel like her star is really, really rising. And I think it's a good place for women's boxing because you got a couple women now who are each of them, not, you know, it, it, the best in the world at their weight class, but are, not, are also very, very good boxers, putting on really good shows. And I hope, you know, this fight with Pursuing the first fight and the second fight now have created these storylines. And that's what, you know, women's boxing needs storylines to sell these fights, you know, Pursue now is going to go on and she can have good fights. And Katie Taylor is going to go on and have good fights. And they may meet for a third one down the line. But I like the fact that women's boxing is getting bigger. And I want to see women's boxing take the world stage at the head of the card, you know, at the, topping the card, not necessarily just having to be on the undercard all the time. And um, I think with stars like Clarissa Shields and Katie Taylor and, um, well, C- Celia Break has just lost, but you know, there's really good fighters, you know, at each weight class. And I want to see them keep rising up. Um, You know, MMA has done a really good job at marketing women fighters as top flight fighters in the world. And they lead cards. Like Amanda Nunes isn't going to open up underneath anybody, except maybe like a a bigger uh, male fighter. But she leads her own cards for the most part. She's a double champion within the UFC. So it's very rare you see her under a card. I want to see women's boxing leading those cards. Katie Taylor has the chops to lead a card. And um, let's see women's boxing grow. Well, I'll say this. That fight yesterday, I think that warrants her having her own card. You know what I mean? And I also want to say this. And I be hating on this dude sometimes, but I have to be honest. Salute to Eddie Hearn because he had the best fight card out of 
uh, ESPN, PBC, and the Zone. The Zone had it. You know what I mean? That double header was was action packed. You know what I mean? Even the 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 undercards like fights were entertaining. You know what I mean? So salute to Eddie on this one. Yeah. So for me, uh, I thought Katie won the fight. Um, I actually scored the fight ninety six to ninety four. Um, I gave Katie Teller the first five rounds. I gave Delphine from six to eight. Then I gave Katie Teller uh, the ninth round, and I gave Delphine the tenth round. So um, that's the way I scored it. So I had it 96 to 94. The way I saw the fight was um, Delphine's game plan was to just overwhelm Katie with activity, um, nonstop punches for two rounds and hope that she landed the better punches during that round. Wasn't necessarily skill based, but all stamina based. And like Ned pointed out, she would be in the corner huffing and puffing and come out and still just nonstop pressure and punches, just relentless for 10 rounds. And um, Katie Teller started off the fight, um, in my opinion, boxing beautifully, like from round uh, one through five. She started to fade a little in five because five was competitive. It was a uh, it was a round where Delphine presumed definitely could have stole the round. I think G even said he scored it for her, but I think scoring that round for uh, Delphine presumed would have been more of a comparative round. Like compared to how you looked in the first four rounds, you did better in the fifth. Although Katie still landed the better punches, so um, to me, I I think Katie won that round. But then. That round was like a sign of things to come in which Katie began to slow down and fight more and then Delphine began to impose her will. And Delphine on my card, because I gave Katie the first five rounds, so Delphine needed um, the next five to uh, win and then Katie won the ninth round. And I think like, I think she won the ninth round decisively as well. So I don't even think that was like a close round or like a swing round. And I think that's what put Katie over the top. So two judges have it, uh, 96-94. And I, and I believe the ninth round is where Delphine Pursum lost that fight. If she wins that ninth round, I think it's a draw again. Well, And everyone's like, you know, well, I mean, not a draw, but you know what I mean? It, it, it's because Katie got the first one, but it would be a draw. And then everyone would be like, oh, man, because it was that close. To me, it was really a one-round fight. Um, I use an app, though. Um, this app that I use, I won't say the name because they don't promote boxing bros, but on this app, um, you can see how everyone using this app scored the fight like per round. So there are 470 people who were scoring the fight when I was scoring the fight. And out of the 470 people, Pursum wins 96 to 94. So the average, because they take the average of each round of people who give the round to a person. And the average of 470 people had Katie winning round one, round two. Delphine Pursun, uh, Pursun won uh, round three. Uh, Katie won round four. Delphine went in rounds five through eight. And then Katie Teller went in round nine. And then Delphine went in round 10. So that's the way 400 people. So once again, you have another close fight, but I think the right person won. Delphine admits that the right person won. I think it was a good night for women's boxing. And Katie Taylor showed grit, heart. I would like to see her get that stamina up, though, because I do, I do feel like she faded and it made the fight harder than it had to be. Let us know how you feel. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, check out our podcast on all major streaming services. Thanks for rocking with us. This is the Boxing Bro. Catch me creeping down the dark street. This is where it means the zombies meet. Guarantee we all gonna eat. A zombie red again with HD. I'm a zombie in the night, you better run for me. Zombie red in the house, you better run, homie. Brought a mask and some gloves with some thugs with me. I came to do damage, you wanna purge with me. Super Saiyan zombie, I'll be.